let's let's just get started then um so i have the website open here uh i just posted a few minutes ago problems at one okay so we're gonna get a rapid start on things um just so we can start you know uh really getting into the details and practicing stuff okay so i know i haven't really done anything but i'm actually going to cover uh you know most about this today okay and it's it's not that complicated um and then this problem set's going to be due next week so it's uh it's two questions okay i can i mean i can just put it up right now um kind of four parts uh this one the first one is is relatively similar to what we're going to do in class okay so i don't think it's not that much of a leap okay just like one little change um the second one's a little trickier i think adding in um some endogenization of, of technology just a very simple linear setup there um but yeah so i i mean um yeah so i don't think it'll be too hard uh um and i'm 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 i mean I'm, I'm testing out kind of what's an appropriate uh problem set size for a one week um turnover time which because I, I usually do too so if it's if it seems like it's too much then you can just let me know all right um yeah and i guess uh yeah so then um and then in terms of so it's gonna be doing Thursday next week, right? So I well, actually I guess we don't have no we do have we have, we have class on Tuesday. I was thinking MLK. Um so we'll have class on Tuesday, we can talk about it if you want. Um and I guess I was thinking maybe we could have uh office hours on Wednesdays um at some point. Um I guess you got you guys have Wednesday morning class at ten thirty, I assume, right? So and anything else in that afternoon going on? Okay, so maybe, uh, let me think. Yeah, I mean, what? So probably Wednesday afternoon, I'll probably, like, let's say, like around 2 p.m. Um, let's say that that'll be the time. But, you know, if, if one of you, there's only five of you, so we can certainly find a time that works for everyone. So if one of you has uh, trouble with some points in the afternoon, like 2 p.m. in particular, just let me know. We can, we can, uh, move it around a little bit. Okay. Uh, but let's, let's say that provisionally, and I'll post that on the website. Okay, so then, and that way, we can talk on Tuesday. You got more questions on Wednesday. We can ask him, and then, then it'll be due on Thursday. I think it's a good rhythm. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, but let's get started with Malthus. Okay, because that's what the problem sets on, and I want to give you uh, uh, some of the work with there. Okay. So we did it. We all the history stuff done. Oops. Okay, I went too far. Okay. So then we kind of we basically talked about um, Malthus. A little bit, okay. Uh, Junhyun. Oh, I can't hear. Shit, I can't hear you. Hold on, one sec. I don't know if it's me or you. I think it might be me. Jun Junhyun, do you want to try talking again? It's. Are you saying something? Oh, I can't hear. I can't hear you either, Bruno. Hold on. Uh, I know why. My my headphones aren't actually working. Let me just uh these work in here here we go okay how about now yeah yeah i can hear you okay mm -hmm. um i mean anything's fine uh so yeah handwritten yeah so like because uh, yeah, it's gonna be all remote so handwritten is totally fine you know that, that's that's easier i mean just write it out it's good um and then the only thing is because you're gonna be handing on canvas um just make sure you scan it with like a proper you know like cam scanner or whatever one of those kind of scanning things like so like sometimes people just take a picture from like you know a weird angle or weird lighting just try and be careful there in that way it should be should be good um you know if you want to do go full latex maybe you know latex and and you're a, a masochist then go for it too uh if you want to use the ipad then you know the ipad actually i find if you have an ipad or some kind of tablet that works pretty well too and it's easier to, to hand in virtually so but anything really is fine as long you usually the you do okay all right cool yeah i mean yeah the the major impediment historically has been there's just a fixed effect how good is your handwriting uh and that varies a lot from student to student but you know so if you have bad handwriting just try to be careful but if you're using an ipad usually it's, it's totally fine anyway so um mm-hmm Wait, Junhan, did you have a question or did you, or you were just trying to like alert me to the fact that I couldn't actually hear you guys?
Okay. All right. Good. Good class, man. <laughs> um. All right. So. Uh. Okay. So then let's yeah let's do let's do Malthus. I can hear you now. That's an important. I I did feel like it was a little quiet. So that that makes sense now. Um. Okay. So. All right. So here, here's. So so last time, I I talked about these these assumptions a little bit. That's correct. Um. And so uh. So I I guess I'll. I feel like. Where did I put those? Oh yeah, okay. Um, so I, yeah, I kind of I drew some stuff I think on the iPad a little bit, just talking about the assumptions. Um, and and yeah, so but basically the three, you know, just to review the three about these assumptions are, you know, we have a, a fixed amount of land, okay, and that's not going anywhere for now. And but we're calling it's, you know, it's it it's called K because because in the future K is going to be capital and it kind of looks like capital, but it's fixed and you can't create any more of it. Um, and then uh, you know population growth is going to be um, linearly in, uh, in in the in the specific case we're doing, but it's going to be somehow positively uh, related to the standard of living. Okay, for the the reasons that I went over last time about birth rates and death rates being related to to the income level. Okay, and then uh, yeah, basically that the production uses uses only these two factors and then throws in some technology. Okay, and that's going to give you what's called Malthusian stagnation or miserization or something where you're just going to go down to some minimal standard of living um, and, and so on. Okay. So I think, um, yeah, so I'm going to do the same thing I did last time and just jump over the, the iPad. I think I had, I wrote stuff last time and I don't know, if, I, I think it disappeared somehow, but um, you know, so basically uh, if, if you want to think about um, the sort of the major assumptions. Okay. So uh yeah, well, so, okay, so there's a fixed amount of land um, that, so I guess I'll write it out. So there's a fixed amount of land, which means that uh, K, which is land, is fixed. Okay, that's assumption number one. Okay, um, assumption number two, okay, is, is this demographic rule. Okay, so that's, um, you know, in the, in the specific case that I use in the slides, that's going to say that the growth rate of population. So I guess I should again um, define things. All right. Somehow I'm in the middle of the page here, but uh, we'll define population and everything like that. So L is population. K is land. And Z we'll say is technology. All right, and then I get, we'll also be talking about Y, which is up, but I think those are the only important ones. Okay. Um, all right, so then in this case, the growth rate of, of L, GL, if you call it, is um, going to be Y over L minus some Y bar times theta. Okay. Um, and then uh, number three, well, number three basically is, is saying you, you, these are what go into the production function. Okay, so in this case, we're going to write have this Cobb Douglas production function. Okay. So those are our um, three kind of uh, assumptions. All right. And, you know, essentially, uh, you know, the, uh, you can, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about different demographic rules a lot. So I, mean, I think it's useful to plot it. Okay. So, um, you know, in, in the slides, you know, uh, with that simple model, we're just positing some positive relationship here between y over l, which is going to also refer to a little y per capita output, okay, and uh, you know gl, which is of that over l, okay. So and you know that number two there is just saying that's some positive linear relationship with slope theta, okay, and then that intercept point here is y bar, okay. So that's the point where um, yeah, so zero. That's the point where uh, there's there's no uh, population growth happening in the, the if there's no population growth happening that means that the population is co is going to stay constant if you stay at that point okay um, all right and so uh, yeah so and the, the derivation of sort of the the steady state is pretty simple okay I mean you you, you start with this uh, production function and think about you know little y which is y over l that's just going to kill off one of the L terms there. So you get Z K to the alpha L to the minus alpha, or if you combine things Z times K over L 
it turned into a two. It should be an alpha. Okay, we're all to the alpha. Okay, so you get, you know, um, and, and yeah, so, or, you know, sometimes for K over L, we'll write little K. Problem is little K looks a lot like capital K, my handwriting, so that it becomes difficult. So we'll just leave it like that, all right? So, you know, the, the standard of living is, is uh, some function, basically, of the amount of land per person, K over L, all right? And that's that picture I drew. I know I drew this picture last time. Um, you know, basically, if you just think about it, you got a fixed size world with a certain amount of land K and everyone just gets their own plot. Okay, so I, and, and I think I'm drawing these plots like they're fish scales for some reason, but that's that's just how they made the, the farms. I didn't, I didn't decide. Um, so the, uh, you know, that's what the, the world looks like. Everyone got their little plot. And if you had more people, they have less size plot, they grow less food and they have less food uh, to eat. That's bad, all right? So it's just, it's a really simple mechanical world, all right? Um, and that's what's going on with that that production function. Okay, so, um, yeah. So so and and once once you have that, okay, then you can say like in steady state. I guess that that's the, the chain of logic would be okay. If we're in steady state, okay, that means we're not moving around. Things aren't moving around. Okay, then you know we should have l dot equals zero. Let's say let's say we're looking for a steady state where the population is constant. Okay. And from that demographic rule, that means y over L is equal to y bar, okay? But then the production function tells us that, you know, basically, uh, let's see if this somewhere. okay, so uh, the production function tells us that um, y over L is going to be equal to z, k over L to the alpha, okay, so that means uh, y bar is equal to y over l, which is equal to z k over l. The officer just combine those two assumptions, or that the, combine those two sort of results, um, and then we have you know y bar equals z k over l of the alpha. So the only unknown in that equation is is l itself, basically. Okay, so then you can solve for l. Uh, let's see. So you get um. No, uh, let's see. So if we want to solve for L, put it that, that's going to be like Z bar over Z over Y bar to the one over alpha times uh, K. All right, which is what I have in the notes. That's always good that they agree. Um, so you have, you know, basically some proportion, you know, you have some proportionality linearly between labor and land. Okay, so that means that the K over L, basically this plot size here, on this, you know, K over L equilibrates to some value that's a function of technology and that minimal standard of living. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, so you get, you know, you say, okay, we're looking for a steady state where L, L is not moving around. So L dot equals zero. That implies that standard of living, which implies a, a certain actual value for L. Okay. So there's a value for L where it doesn't move around. Okay. So, um, yeah. And, and we talked about some of the comparative statics you can think about last time. Okay. So, um, so, so that's the steady state behavior is that you just, that's called, you know, that's the Malthusian stagnation or Malthusian immiseration. It's basically, I mean, basically it's that it is sort of an overcrowding story. Okay. You just have a fixed technology for producing food and a fixed amount of land. And you just, you just have this, this overcrowding story where, uh, the population grows until people are relatively poor. Okay. So, um, now, if you want to think about the dynamics, okay, so I think it's good to know how to kind of work through the dynamics. I mean, the, uh, let's see, so the, I mean, the explicit dynamics are not going to be really, let's see, uh, pro probably not super amenable to a closed form solution. I'm trying to think. Maybe there are some special cases, but you're going to, if you think about, think about equation two, L dot over L, and, and you plug in this Y over L, so some non-linear function of L on the right-hand side. So that's the difficult uh, uh, differential equation to solve explicitly. Um, you, might be, you might be able to do a parameter substitution. I haven't actually ever thought about this, but you might be able to do a parameter substitution, but it's probably not worth it. Okay, so but, but we can just think through the, the what the dynamics should look like and get a really, basically all we need to know uh, out of that. Okay, so if you think about, and I'm gonna do it in this, this graph here, okay? Um, so I've been, that's kind of like, 
mean, it's, it's just a straight line. That's all it is. Okay. And I guess it, at zero, you just have some, there's some points not really important what that is. We're not going to worry about hitting zero down on the standard of living. Okay. So, so what, what are the dynamics? Okay. So first of all, where do you start? Okay. So your, your state variable is population. That's really the only thing that's moving around. Everything else is fixed. Okay. So your state variable is population. Um, and in terms of where you are on this graph, okay, so we know that, uh, uh, you know, if you know population L, okay, you know all this stuff, you can, that implies a certain value for your little y. Okay, so once you know population, immediately you know little y. Okay, so then that means the initial condition is just kind of a, uh, it can also be characterized by what's your initial value for your standard of your little y. Okay, so, um, no, so let's say you have initial condition with a high value for y. Okay, if you're at that point, that means your L dot over L, your growth rate of population is positive. So your population is going to grow over time. And that means that your standard of living is going to go down. Things get more crowded. Okay, so you start there, you're going to move down here, and eventually you're going to hit steady state and you're going to stay there. Okay. If you start too low, okay, here, uh, you're, you're, well, you're left of y bar. Okay. So you have a relatively low standard of living, which means you have a lot of people. Basically, um, your population growth rate is going to be negative. You're going to be losing population and hence actually your standard of living will go up over time. So you're going to move, you're moving right. Okay. But on the line you're moving up and right. Okay. So that's why I'm drawing it like that. And you're going to move to steady state. Okay. So really no matter, this is a stable model, no matter where you start, you're going to end up at y bar. Okay. As one unique, uh, globally stable steady state that's also locally stable okay um and that's pretty much it okay so this is this is a pretty uh friendly model in the sense of it, it gives you a unique stable everything steady state okay so um yeah so so that's kind of the the, the basic about these model okay so then you know We'll be talking about these concepts uh, for, you know, thinking about steady state and stability and all that um, a lot and characterizing it more, uh, a little bit more um, technically and when we do solo model, okay? Um, but that's that's the basics, okay? So I guess, um, yeah, so, so that's step number one, okay? And then what we're going to do now is trying to kind of wriggle out of this Malthusian stagnation to see what, what we can do to 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 try and get out of that world okay because clearly somehow we did it okay um and so let, let's think about what, what assumptions we can can loosen okay so try you know try and generate some kind of growth over time okay so um let's see so i mean I, the, this is all in the notes okay in the lecture notes um so i, I guess uh we can just go through it in that order. Okay. So the first, the first thing you might say is, okay, well, what happens, you know, this, and this is kind of a comparative static. You could say, okay, well, what happens if there is a change in technology? Okay. And we also talked about this last time, if there's a change in technology. Okay. So, uh, you know, I can, you can, you can draw basically the same thing in this, in the graph. So I'll just rewrite it here on the next page. L dot over L Y over L. Okay. So, um, this is GL, this is Y. Okay, so if you have, if you know, if you're at steady state, okay, at Y bar, all right, if you're at steady state and you have an, uh, an increase in technology, Z, okay, um, in the, uh, well, so remember, you know, Y, little Y is Y over L, which is Z, okay, over L, the alpha, and that's our production function transformed. So if you have an increase in Z in the short run, K and L are fixed. Okay, so K is fixed and L is a slow moving object. Okay, um, so Z jumps up in the short run, Y is gonna jump up. Okay, right, so maybe I'll also draw an actual time path of Y. Okay, so here's some you know, zero point T zero. Okay, we're at Y bar, this is Y, T is our X axis. So, so we were going along unhappily at Y bar uh there's this improvement in technology and that causes like this discontinuous jump up here okay and the question is what happens after that okay so on this graph on the left that means we're going to be at some higher point both farther to the right but on that line also higher up 
Okay. So like when I'm when I'm drawing the arrows, I'm doing them on the line, but really all the movement is just happening in Y in some sense. But we're gonna jump up to this point with that improvement in technology, but then the Malthusian logic kicks back in and we have positive population growth, which then sort of eventually pushes Y down. And then eventually you've dissipated all that technological gain into uh, you have a larger population. L goes up, right? Because um, remember in the end, we found that L star is K times Z over Y bar to the one over alpha. So L, Z goes up in the long run, L is going to go up, but then that Y bar is going to converge back down to, uh, that Y is going to convert back down to Y bar. So that would look like in this world, let me see if I can successfully draw something, is going to look like that. Okay, so you'll... It'll look something like that. So the, the biggest changes will happen initially, and then you you ask them to it down to to Y bar again. Okay. Um, all right. So so that's that's a one time thing. Okay. You have a one time technological improvement, right? And it just gets dissipated into larger population, and you get the exact same standard of living in the long run. Okay. Um, so we can do better than that. All right. Um, we can say, okay, well, uh, let's do sort of continual technological um, change. So here we're going to say, okay, you know, we had that one time change. Okay. But now let's think about continual change. Okay. So we're going to say that GZ, which is Z dot over Z is uh, positive. That is a greater than outside. Okay. So, so the growth rate of technology Z is going to be positive. All right, so, and, and um, yeah, so I mean, Z, Z dot is positive, but in particular, we're gonna say that, that Z is growing at like an, a fixed growth rate, okay? So um, yeah, so, so what that means, I mean, so if Z has a, a constant positive growth rate, that means it's growing exponentially over time. Okay, so if Z has this constant positive growth rate, that means that Z of T looks like something like Z zero times E to the GZ times T. Okay, so and, and basically these two are equivalent statements. Okay, that it has a, a positive and constant, or it has a constant growth rate, hence it is growing exponentially in the manner on the right. Okay, um, and the reason, you know, so the reason we do it like that rather than having a, a fixed rate of change is just that, um, well, for one, that kind of is what it appears to look like in the data. We have exponential growth in GDP, proportional, continual proportional improvements. You don't generally have level linear sort of over time improvements. Um, and it just makes the math easier too. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. Okay. So I guess uh, at this point, I need to, wait, so at this point we need to think, we need, I think I need to bring in a little bit of sort of like other facts about growth rates that are useful. Okay. So, cause you guys have been doing, you guys have been doing all discrete time stuff. I, is my impression up until now. That's basically, basically right. Okay. Um, so, so there's some neat tricks that are useful for growth rates. I, I guess I'll give you, yeah, I'll, I'll give you some of them now and then, and then we can, we'll refresh them later or maybe to, you know, expand on them in certain ways. Okay. But, um, essentially, all right. Uh, I guess I'll have to make this an aside. So, uh, let's, let's do a quick aside on growth rates here. Okay. So, um, it, yeah, so, so this is a mathematical aside on growth rates. Okay. Um, there, there are certain rules for growth rates that you can use. Okay. That if you want to find, like, and they're basically, they look a lot like derivative rules, like the product rule, the quotient rule, the power rule, all that, those almost exactly analogously also have, have, um, growth rate versions. Okay. So, you know, you know, the derivative, the product rule and derivatives is how do you get the derivative of a times B for instance. Now I say, how do you get the growth rate of a times B if you know the growth rate of a and the growth rate of B. Okay. It turns out it's just the sum. Okay. So, so, but think about it like, um, sure, uh, I'll, I'll use A, B, and C as my, my variables. Okay. So let's say that, 
uh, we have GA equals a dot over A and GB the other B and C is A times B. Okay. And we want to find the growth rate of C. Okay. So that's a, that's like a statement of uh, uh, what would be the product rule for growth rates. Okay. Um, all right. So we can, we can just do it brute force way and, and use the product rule for derivatives and just do, do the algebra. Okay. So, uh, you know, so, so, you know, think about C dot is the product rule for derivatives gives us first times derivative of the second, right? Plus the derivative of the first times the second. Okay. So I'm just, I'm using, you know, it might be a little confusing because I'm using dot notation for der time derivatives, but you know, this is the product rule for a derivative of C. Okay. Uh, I'm omitting of t in a million places here. So now I'm just going to do that the whole course because it would, it, if you write all the of t's out, then you'd end up just spending your whole day writing a parentheses t and parentheses. Okay. So all this stuff can depend on t and time explicitly. Okay. Um, or implicitly. Okay. So that's, that's the product rule for derivatives. Okay. And then if you think about, well, c dot over c, so the growth rate of c, uh, well, you know, it's a, b dot plus a dot b over c, which is a b, a b, okay? And then for that first term, well, the a's cancel, so you get b dot over b. And then for the second term, the b's cancel, and you get a dot over a, okay? Which is just, well, I guess I'll switch the order, but it's just g a plus g b. So I, I, flop, I switched the, the plus order, but it's g a plus g b, okay? So g c is g a plus gb. Okay. So the good thing about the growth rates is that their rules are even simpler. Like the product rule, you know, you have this, you know, first or second, or first times second, all that. It's very simple for, for growth rates is that this is sum. Okay. Now, what does this, what this product rule where you have some, what is, what is that analogous to? Where do we see that? What other realm do we see that? I mean, in math, math world. That is correct. The natural log. So, uh, and, and that's, that's right. And, and there's a reason for that, which is basically, and, and it actually makes our lives a lot easier in deriving all these other ones. Cause we can just use logs instead. Um, the, the reason is that, uh, oops. Okay. Um, if you think about the, uh, you know, G a, okay. I'll go over here. G a is a dot over a. Um, which is, you know, which is one over a times, you know, DA DT just to be, use uh, the old fashioned notation or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, it's the derivative over itself. Okay. Which is just the, you know, D DT of the log of a, right? Because you get, you know, one over a, but then the chain rule gives you DA DT. Okay. So that's really just the growth rate is just the derivative of the logarithm. Okay. So um, we can do an alternative derivation of the product rule where we say, okay, well, uh, you know, GC, okay, is D DT of the log of C. Okay, so I've just established that that's, you know, the, the log is the derivative, the time derivative, uh, sorry, the growth rate is the time derivative of the log. Okay, so then hence GC is the time derivative of log C if we want to find C. And then if you plug it in, you know, you get D D T uh, log of log, not lag of a times B invoke the product rule for logs. Okay. Which is, you know, then gives you D D T log of a plus log of B. Okay. And then, you know, of course, is the, I don't know, this is like linearity of the derivative it's one of those fundamental calculus rules. I don't, it doesn't really matter, but you know, the, the, the derivative is, is uh, linearly separable, right? So we can get D DT of log a D DT of log B. All right. And then by definition, that's GA plus GB. 
Okay, so actually, I mean, in terms of what I had to write, I guess it was probably more ink or virtual ink, but I think it's a little simpler conceptually. It's just like you just you get a direct mapping from all these logarithm rules into derivative rules, or sorry, into growth rate rules. Okay, so so then yeah, so so kind of once you once you realize that that it's just these are all analogs of of logarithm rules because growth rates are the derivative of the log. Um, then it, you can kind of get a bunch of them, right? So we'll do the power rule in a second. Then, and we, you know, but anytime you want to come up with a new rule, just think about logs and you can get there. Okay. And now, and, and I guess the other thing is, you know, it, the fact that the growth rate is derived with the log, you know, if you, uh, we looked at some plots yesterday of exponentially growing, you know, GDP series, and some of them were in logs. And I was saying, you know, if, if you, if you plotted an exponential series in logs, if it has a constant growth rate, it's gonna have, it's gonna be linear in that log space. Okay, this is basically that's 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 what this is because it's the derivative of the log. If it has a constant growth rate, that means it's gonna be linear in logs over time. Okay, those are those come from the same sort of basic idea. Okay, so um, all right, so I you know you'll you're gonna have time to you're gonna be doing a lot of stuff with growth rates. Okay, so you'll 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 get the hang of all of these how to find the growth rate of some expression I throw at you. Okay, and a lot of times you can just use the rules and, and get there very, fairly simply. Uh, sometimes you got to brute force it if it's a little more complicated, but most of the time it'll be relatively straightforward. Okay, I guess the only other thing is that um, let's let's think about um, the the power rule. Okay, and I'll just I'll derive it using logarithms. Okay, so uh, imagine we have I'll say d is equal to b raised to the alpha. Okay. Uh, in that case, um, that means that log D is equal to alpha log B. So I'll put parentheses here, right? From the, the, the power rule for logarithms, okay? And hence, if you take the derivative of, this, and so this, I'm gonna do this like the, the, the way you would normally do it for a quick derivation. So start with the, the identity of D, the definition, take logs, apply your logarithmic rules, and then just take the derivative of the, both sides of that equation, okay? And hence, on the left, you get the derivative of the log of d, which is gd. I'm not, I'm not gonna write it out. And on the right, you get alpha gb, okay? So, I, I mean, I, I went through that quicker, didn't write as much, but basically it's just you take the, the definition, take the log of it, take derivative, and you can pretty quickly map from these logarithm rules into these growth rate rules, okay? Uh, so in this case, you know, if you, if you, if you, ex, if you raise, uh, some series that, to a certain power alpha, you just multiply the growth rate, okay? And that's gonna be, really, that's kind of all we need for, for most of the stuff we do. It's just the product rule and the exponential and the power rule, because um, you think about the, the, what we're gonna use it on in a second is Cobb Douglas production function. It's just stuff, you take stuff, you raise the powers and you multiply them together. Like 90% of, of the expressions that we're gonna be looking at are just doing that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, when you add stuff, taking taking the growth rate of adding two things is so sometimes it's a sign that you've gone off the rails. Okay, it's just not something that we do that much because we make assumptions that ensure we don't get there because things don't work as as well. Okay, um, but yeah, I, don't worry about it too much from right now. But that, you'll, you'll see. Uh, okay, so so that was the aside on growth rates. Okay. And now I'm going to sort of apply those to, to think about uh, our problem here again with Malthus and in particular our production function. Okay, so um, I guess, uh, yeah, so I'll start a new page. So, so, uh, so let's think about our production function. So we're going to think about, again, continual growth in Z technology. Okay, so it's going to be positive, all right, and constant, all right. Um, okay, so what does that mean? So I guess, you know, what we can do is harken back to our production function, which, which gives us an expression for y over l, which is k over l, the alpha. Okay, so that's, that's our primary object of interest here. Um, and we want to know, okay, so we know, like, we know how Z is moving around now. We, we have some idea of L through 
our demographic equation. Okay, um, and k is constant, alpha is constant. Okay, so what's g little y going to be? Well, it's basically going to be, you know, so just going through it explicitly, it's going to be, I'll, I'll go through it explicitly this time, just because it's the first time that we're doing this growth rate stuff. But, you know, it's one of those things where you can write it out every step of the way and see how it works. But once you start doing it more and, off, more, and more often, you'll you'll skip steps and, and go faster. But GY, you know, apply the product rule is going to be GZ plus G of that whole thing, K over L to the alpha. All right. So first apply the product rule, then unpack. So then we have GZ, unpack the thing on the right. So we get, that's going to be alpha times G of K over L. All right. That's the power rule that we use there. Um, okay. I, oh, I didn't talk about the quotient rule, but you could probably guess the quotient rule is just going to be, it's the difference of the, the growth rates. The, the growth rate of K over L is the growth of K minus the growth rate of L. Okay. Just like in the Lux. Okay. So then that means we have GZ plus alpha times GK minus GL. All right. And I, I, I wrote it in parentheses because I had to write, you know, G of that whole expression, but you know, G of Z in parentheses is, is equivalent to G sub Z. Those are the same idea and, and object. Okay. So, all right. So this is, so, and I guess I'll, you know, these, these, these mean the same thing. So alpha <clears throat> G sub K minus G sub L. Okay. So, all right. So now uh, that's, the gen in the general sense, just us, you know, we've, we've growth rate of that equation up top, right? And now it's nice and linear because it was, it was just a combination of powers and products and ratios. Okay. Um, so that's, that's useful in general, you kind of linearizing things in a way. All right. Um, okay. But we know things about these growth rates, right? So in particular, we know by assumption, GK is zero, the growth rate of land, that's, it's not going anywhere. So the derivative of k is zero, the growth rate of k is zero, it's all zero. All right, so we can use that. I was accidentally right behind my own face here. Um, so gy is gz, basically minus alpha gl. Okay, so this is kind of important, I think. Um, this expression, so this, this kind of encodes a lot of what we know in a nice, simple, linear form, okay? And then, you know, we know that gl, I'll just rewrite it, is... That's just our demographic equation, you know, y minus y bar. So, so in some sense, these two equations here are sort of a simpler, more linear way of phrasing uh, the model. Okay, and I guess you could even combine them. You know, say basically this is gy is gz minus alpha. We don't mean that uh, alpha theta y minus y bar. Okay. So, so that in, in itself is, is a self-contained, uh, equation describing the movement of Y, right? We kind of eliminated L, right? So then, um, in the, in the, in the original world where G, we, GZ was zero and Z wasn't moving around. So G Z equals zero. You just get GY is, you know, minus alpha theta times Y minus Y bar. If you're looking for a steady state, it's just where does gy equal zero? Okay. Uh, well, it equals zero when y equals y bar. Okay. So that's that's basically what we found before. Okay. Um, and uh, and 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 it also it provides you a way of arguing. You know, I I kind of just said that we were going to end up in a steady state where where y was not moving. Okay. Um, or so I strongly argued it. I guess. Uh, you can you can go through a, a slightly more formal proof about as formal as as, as I'll get, uh, you know, not, not maybe not up to micro uh, you know micro theory standards, but you know if you had G Y being positive, okay, then Y would be growing exponentially, and so on, on the right hand side here, this Y would keep going up and up and up, which would then imply the growth rate would keep going down and down and down, okay, which well, you know, eventually you'd have to equilibrate. Okay. So they, they, this doesn't work out to have, uh, non-zero growth rates, uh, at least when GZ is zero. Okay. Um, 
All right. So now, uh, and, and especially, let's see. So yeah. And, and, um, in, in this case, when I've assumed this type of demographic function, it just never works out. Basically that's, that's what we're going to see. Okay. So, um, all right. So then, uh, uh, yeah. And then the other thing I'll say is, um, again, if you imagine we're in a world where G equals G is equal to zero, you know, that minus sign is indicative of stability. Also, because it means that if Y is large, then the growth rate of Y is small. So that push it down. If Y is small, the growth rate is going to be positive, we'll push it up. So that negative sign is indicative of, of stability. Okay. Um, okay. So then, uh, but, but, you know, we don't need to constrict ourselves, restrict ourselves to the world where G equals zero. We can think about when GZ is potentially positive. Okay. Um, and so in that case, you know, if, if we're looking for a steady state, okay, then I guess we're, we're going to say, well, where, if what's a point where G Y is equal to zero. Okay. So let's say we're, um, cause, cause if, if we, ha we still have that problem that if, if G Y was positive, Y would be growing exponentially. And eventually this would go negative, which then it's not positive contradiction. If G Y was negative, this thing would be, um, well, GY can't be negative, actually. Or no, it can't, it can't be negative. So GY is negative, let me think. Then Y would be going to zero. And this would converge to GZ plus alpha theta Y bar. Uh, which is positive. Yeah, which is positive. Okay, I'm just, I, I didn't, I, I forgot to actually think through the details. So assume GY is negative. This y here eventually, you know, it's exponentially going down to zero, and hence will be approximately zero, and so you end up with g y is equal to g z plus alpha theta y bar, which is positive contradiction. Okay, so so whatever you assume, it's going to contradict what you assumed, and hence it can't be positive strictly, it can't be negative strictly, so it has to be zero. Okay, so yeah, I'm not, you know, we're we're not doing that the. the the proofs aren't that important, I think, in, in this class, right? So it, uh, I, I'm not going to spend too much time on going through the proofs. I usually screw them up anyway, so um, I'll leave that to the micro theory folks. All right, but but you can kind you can give it intuition and argument and, and a sort of an informal proof about why you, you can't have a non-zero growth rate. Okay. Um, all right. So where is g y equal to zero? Okay. Well, that means that just using that equation above, that means that g z is equal to alpha times theta y minus y bar. Okay. Um, which, you know, but which is also, um, you know, just going back to the old notation is, is, is alpha times GL. Okay. So you can, you know, you can see from this equation up here, when g y equals zero, g z equals alpha times GL using our particular functional form, that means it equals alpha theta y minus y bar. Okay. Um, Okay, so then um, from that, well, then we can get an expression for y. Okay, right, so we know, G, remember, gz is given from on high. There is just technology being rained down upon us, or, or people are just thinking about it exogenously and, 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 and implementing it. Uh, everything else is a parameter. Okay, so we can, we can just solve for, for y bar. Okay, so that means that um, y bar, sorry, say little y, I was saying y bar, we can solve for a little y, because y bar is also a parameter. So y bar is going to, so what little y is going to be y bar plus uh, gz over alpha theta. Okay, so that's, that's what we get, right? So what, what we get from continual, um, and I'll, I'll draw this graphically in a moment, so we can get maybe some more intuition. But just in terms of the, uh, um, in terms of the, uh, finding the state state algebraically, all we get is we go from a continual, perpetual, eternal, exponential growth in Z, we go from Y bar to Y bar plus a little something. Okay, so if you think about it, it's kind of disappointing, you know, because we put in a lot and what we get out is just a slight increment in, in the standard of living. Maybe it's not slight, but we have some level of increment in the standard of living. Okay, so that's, I would say, a little disappointing, all right? Um, I don't know how to, we, we, I, I don't know how to put 
realistic or you know um intuitive numbers on these things i mean in the in the world that we live in gz looks to be around two percent maybe alpha is a half so that's four percent i don't know what theta is right that that depends on how fast the population grows and we don't i haven't said anything about what y bar is or what units we're even talking about right so we're still in kind of fantasy land here okay but you but but just qualitatively you just get a, a, a an incremental bump rather than what we would have hoped for is also getting exponential growth in the standard of living itself that's what you see in the world today and that's what we'll see later on in solar model but you don't get that in this because basically because of the fixed amount of land okay so um technology grows life's good uh you get more output then hence population grows and that density effect counteracts the technology effect okay all right so then um that's the steady state okay but we can also think about um the dynamics okay that's going to be important too all right and and for the dynamics i mean you you can you can actually um go back to this equation up at the top okay and just just think about that because because in the graph that we had okay uh the demographic you know that linear graph that we had we, that's a graph of y versus gl okay and this equation here relates um well, the growth rate of y and gl so it kind of exists in the space that that graph is existing in too and so we can use those two in combination okay um and i guess the critical thing uh is um that uh you know basically G gy will be positive if gz is big enough relative to gl okay so so you know basically uh if gz um yeah i mean you know, if gz is greater than alpha gl then gy is positive and vice versa okay so it's, it's relatively simple okay uh but let let me let me let me plot the, the stuff and and we can go from there okay so uh here and i'm this is gl and this is little y okay and i'm what i'm actually going to do and i guess we, we need the negative space here um uh, i'm going to think about this in uh more general space okay and this is going to get into the a, a more de general demographic function this so this will get into some stuff that will be you'll think about in the homework too and that's that's the one i drew last time where you have let me give myself a little bit more room here that's the one I had last time where you have this Malthusian region and then you kind of have that demographic transition and then let's say you converge to some constant. Okay, and I'm actually gonna exaggerate it a little bit more so we have room to work with. So really exaggerated demographic transition. Okay, so on the right, you know, you're kind of going into that world of, you know, 2% population growth that we see today uh, for in, in uh, relatively advanced countries. Um, and you just kind of, hang out there um i forget I, I can't i can only point so far at some point my, my camera cuts out right but you uh you end up out here uh when you're advanced this is your malthusian zone and this is the transition zone okay so but most of the the modern world is all almost entirely in this area right here on the right side okay so what you're doing in the homework is going to be uh sort of a snap or a zoom in on just this portion and thinking about that logic but i'll i'll give you the logic for the for the general case here okay um all right so then um right so so uh that equation up there right so g the gy uh, equals gz minus alpha gl okay another way to to write it is is um a statement about gl okay so basically if you, if you solve for one is gy positive it's when GL is greater than GZ over alpha. Okay, so G, no, GY, right over here, GY positive. Well, then you need um, GL is greater than GZ over alpha. Okay, so that, me what, what, that means that basically, if let's say we know GZ, okay, 2% or whatever. We know alpha. That means that GZ over alpha is 4% or something like that. Okay, so that's something. That's a point we can plot on this y-axis because it's 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 a mark. You know, it's sort of a a boundary point in the GL space. Okay. 
so the, the gz over alpha that's all parameter stuff right so that's just a number okay so let's say um uh but 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 there's going to be different cases okay so maybe i'll i'll draw a boring case first and then we're going to switch it up okay so let's say this is gz over alpha we have a lot of growth okay and i'll even draw a dotted line here okay so uh this is like the really high growth regime okay um and what happens in this case is well you know do the same thing we did before okay so before remember this is oh no uh this is not going to be a steady state okay but this is still y bar that intersection point okay or, well the the function i haven't specified what this function is algebraically but you know this this is the intersection point so maybe i shouldn't write y bar but there is an intersection point with zero, but that's not going to be where we end up. Okay. Because let's, let's imagine we were at that point where the growth rate of population is zero. Okay. Well, what's going to happen? Well, we know that because GZ over alpha is greater than GL, which is zero. Okay. So L isn't moving. Technology is getting better. Okay. Then in that case, okay. Uh, you're going to see um, it, Y go up, okay? So Y is going to go up, you're going to move. And when you move, that's still true because GZ, GZ over L is way up there. Any point below that dotted line, Y is going to be growing, okay? And then, since you're always below that line, you're just going to keep going and going and going until you just your Y grows uh, exponentially, okay? And, and what's... The growth rate of GY going to be kind of in the limit? Well, it's going to be GZ minus alpha GL, but that's going to be positive. And this is going to be like GL star. That's that limiting like 2% rich country uh, uh, growth rate. So you're going to go way out here. This is going to be your GL, which is going to converge, say, to a constant like 2%. And hence, um, you get a positive long run growth rate. Okay. You're still like, it's still a race versus it's still a race between technology and overcrowding, but it's just technology is good enough that it wins. Okay. And that the demographics don't explode, right? So you don't keep getting more higher and higher growth rates. So then let's say this is 2% alpha is a half GL is 2%. Then you get 1% growth rate in the standard of living. Okay. Um, all right. So, so that's, you can do it, right? So you can generate growth as you just need a demographic transition to, to sort of short circuit this like extreme, just if you just keep extrapolating this, it stops being reasonable. So you get this demographic transition here and also a high enough growth rate. Okay, so that's that's one way to get continual growth. Okay, the funny thing is, I mean, this is like um, hyper dense world, right? Because technology density is literally going to infinity in this world, right? Because there's a fixed amount of land the, the population is still growing exponentially at 2%, but technology keeps getting better. So it's like you get super fancy skyscrapers or whatever, and uh, but you just still have a fixed amount of land. Okay, so it's like, I don't know, Blade Runner, except yeah, it's probably like Blade Runner. Okay, let's say that. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so that's 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 what you get. Okay, so that's that's one case. That, that's a relatively easy case. All right, I guess the other... Um, Thing you can do i'm gonna i'm just gonna use the same graph okay uh is think about the opposite extreme where you have like a really paltry growth rate okay so if you have a zero growth rate gz is zero we're back to that old malthusian world okay this is i'm i'm, I'm, I'm constrained myself kind of severely here but it's the best i can do um essentially what happens here is if if you have a, a relatively small growth rate that's below entirely below this curve for the advanced part, you're just going to end up at this intersection point. Okay. So, you know, if, if you're up here, you're above that dotted line now. So remember, so this is our new GZ over alpha. I'm, I'm changing GZ on you guys. I'm saying it's now low, but positive. In that world, <clears throat> if you end up here, you're going to move down. Okay. If you end up, if you're below here, you're going to move up. So that, that world is pretty much what we solved right here is that 
you get a little bit of an increment in y, okay? So that your, your new y is gonna be like a little bit higher right there, okay? That's exactly the world that we solved for right here using just that Malthusian um, com portion of the demographic rule. That's, that's exactly what we find here, okay? So that turned out to be a disaster um, graphically. So I'm just gonna erase that part and redo it. But essentially what I'm saying is if you have a low, a relatively low growth rate such that you don't even like get into the advanced zone, that's what we solve for here with the pure Malthusian because essentially it's pure Malthusian because you don't have any chance of ever getting into the advanced area. You're always stuck in the Malthusian world, okay? If you're out here, your, your growth rate's gonna push you all the way along this because you're always above that dotted line and then down here, okay? So yeah, uh, let's do that. All right, so that's what we got, all right? And now we're gonna do the interesting intermediate value, okay, which is like here. Okay, I'm gonna erase that. So if it's there, okay, it's kind of in the middle. This is GZ over alpha here. Okay, so this is the, the more interesting uh, zone. Let me attempt to draw a line once again. All right, and so, and we can see that, you know, the kind of the important points are gonna be these intersections Although the question is, what, what do they mean and, and how do they partition the space? Okay, so, you know, this this is, we'll see this a lot. I mean, we're, we have a, a graph that defines our movement through the space here, okay? Essentially, it's Y space. That's what we're moving through, okay? So if we know where we are in Y space, <clears throat> this graph tells us what GL is. And, you know, GY is GZ minus alpha GL we can compute where we move. So given a point in white space, we know where we're moving and we can iteratively just logically work through this and figure out where we end up. Okay, so that's gonna be a common thing that we do to understand these types of continuous time models is, is this kind of phase space stuff, okay? Uh, or state space stuff, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, so so let's do that here, all right? So let's say that, um, well, I'll, st I'll start low and see, see where we end up. Okay, so let's say we start down here, all right? We're below the dotted line. So you know, population growth is negative and technology is positively growing. So those combine into a net positive as well. And so we're going to move up. Okay. Keep going. And even when we go into positive population growth, GL, uh, that's going to push down our growth partially, but then technology at the dotted line is high enough that it counteracts it, at least in this region here. So we're going to keep, we're going to blow by zero. Not even going to see it. Okay. Eventually, um, we get to this point, okay? Um, and at that point, all right, uh, well, if, if we're exactly at this point, by definition, this is the point where GY is equal to zero. Okay, so if, if we're exactly at that point, we're gonna stay there, all right? If we're to the left of it, we're gonna move to it, all right? So then the question is, what happens if we are to the right of it? Okay, so let's say we're like here, Okay, just a little bit to the right of it. Well, there, uh, GL is large, okay? GL is uh, is large and it's it's larger than, it's large enough to counteract and, and exceed the effect of technological growth. Okay, so this is like, you're rich-ish, you're, you're not poor, you, there's high population growth, but you're not that rich. So you're, 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 you're more like a, uh, uh, country in the modern world with a relatively low um, uh, standard of living relative to the to the rest. Okay, um, it would be quite low probably. Okay, so in that case, you're actually, you're going to move back down. Okay, so on the on the right hand side, you move down, and that's going to be true anywhere in here. So you're going to move down along this curve. Okay, so basically, okay, so we have you know, let's call this y zero here, y one anywhere. To the left of y1, you're going to converge to y0. So y0 is a, is a basin anywhere on the left side, whether you're on the left or right of y0, you're going to converge in towards that. Okay. Um, all right. So so this is a real stable steady state. Okay. Because you, you converge to it on both sides. This steady state y1, you know, it's unstable, uh, especially, I mean, on the left side, it's unstable because if you're on the left side, you're gonna have excessive population growth that's gonna push you down on towards to Y zero. If you're on the right side, well, that's the good zone because 
population growth is not enough to overcome technology and you're going to move on out towards that right hand side so the the other point of steady state is long run growth where y keeps growing exponentially and that population growth rate converges to some constant like two percent okay so the so the first the left y zero is a stable steady state y one is is a stationary point but it's unstable and so if you go out, fall off on either side a little bit you're either going to end up at y zero or in the um, continual growth zone okay so yeah so that's that's what you get if you if you throw in technological change which is probably reasonable and uh and a more realistic demographic function and i i mean it's interesting i think because uh it, 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 you have, um, I mean, you have something that maybe looks like a growth trap. Okay. You have a region where you get stuck. If you, if you start out with a, a, uh, low standard of living, which in this case is the result of having, um, some density that's too high. Um, if you start with the low standard of living. Okay. You end up kind of stuck at Y zero, which is a, a fixed and low level of, of, uh, uh, you know, state of, of income uh, production per person, output per person, okay? Uh, if you have a high enough, if you're above Y1 initially, then you just keep growing forever, okay? So you produce extreme inequality in outcomes depending on where you start, okay? Um, but, but okay, so, but then if you think about it, it's like, what, what does that mean if you were to try and map it into the real world? Okay, so I mean, first, it provides some way to, Think about me, uh, a mechanism for for what we see like wildly differential development paths between countries. Okay, but then also it's not like you're stuck there irrevocably forever, right? Because remember, y little y is z over l of the alpha. Okay, so um, it depends on well, it depends how much land you have per person, basically, and your technology level. So if you have a country that's stuck at y zero, and you give them a ton of technology somehow they get a ton of technology that can push them all the way up above y1 and they can jump onto that conveyor belt and go on towards exponential growth so it's not like if a country is at y0 there's literally nothing you can do you don't have to go full on uh what's his name danos or, or something like that i'm not advocating for that uh and 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 you know but you know reduce uh the population or anything like that um you know you can jump out of that with technology basically okay now what it what it does say is that like if you do it then that will be a a, a way out uh to of that trap okay and to go on towards continual growth okay so i mean but that makes it's not that easy of course because you know you can't just say okay here's here's a book describing a nuclear reactor go build it have fun you know i mean it's, it's, it, these are costly things to implement they require other inputs in terms of like human capital and infrastructure and all that. So it's not that easy, but at least in terms of this model where technology just kind of works once you get it, that would work in the context of the model. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, but, it, but I, I do think it's kind of interesting because you can, um, you can get this sort of bifurcation with, with the relatively simple model. Okay. Um, and then, Let's, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. E oh yeah, it should, it should. Uh, let's see, so yeah, it should, you're right. So G, yeah, no, 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 you're right, you're right. Uh, so yeah, so should be. Yeah, yeah, so GL, yeah, GL is pushing things down, so that means still less than the technological level, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. So, okay, so I think um, I think that's that's kind of the main thing I wanted to go through. Okay, and then I guess uh, yeah, so, so like I said on the homework, you're going to be looking at the right hand side. So what I'm going to I I give you sort of explicit explicit functional form that's sort of just like a step down kind of thing. All right, it'll look like that. So it just kind of it's like it's linear in this region and then it's flat outside of that. Okay, so you're just going to be looking at some simple parameterization of that right hand side. Okay, uh, but keep in mind that, you know, you might uh, have this dynamic where your your initial condition in terms of y influences the long run outcome. Okay, when it, uh, so there might, there might be different cases depending on the initial condition for y. 
Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so then, uh, yeah, so I don't think there's that much more I want to do on Malthus. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, so Malthus, it, it's it's cool. It, 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 there's not that much you can do. Again, I think we've we've kind of run its course. Okay, so and I guess and I guess the other, the other thing I'll say is the second question on the homework. Okay, is it's actually pushing Malthus even further and saying, okay, um, take that first question and add in uh, another. So so instead of having just GZ being totally exogenous, okay. We're going to kind of close the loop okay and then basically what 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 uh question two says is that um what does it say i, I just want to make sure that i actually tell you the right thing uh question two says that yeah z dot okay so z dot is eta times l okay so it says that um instead of just having gz be constant the rate of change of the production of new ideas, okay, is proportional to uh, the population, okay. And what this literally means would would mean is just that you know every person comes up with ideas exogenously at some fixed rate or probability or flow probability eta, okay, and that is z dot. Z dot is, is sort of the flow of new ideas, which we're going to say ideas turn into technology somehow. You come up with an idea that's a technology, and you can use it, and so on. Okay. Um, yeah, so that closes the loop. Now, technology depends on population, but population growth still depends on technology through the standard of living. And so you have sort of this whole equilibrium going on. Okay. Um, so that's, I think, interesting. And it, it, it's the, it manages to produce rel relatively good and simple outcomes. All right. Um, it's still not 100%. So this, the, you know, I'm, I'm forecasting a little farther forward ahead in the course, but this would be the example of, of a semi-endogenous growth model, actually, uh, not fully endogenous. Okay. And so it's semi-endogenous in the sense that um, the, the rate of change of technology depends on some stuff. It's not just a number that you take as given. It depends on other things in the model and hence produces potentially interesting dynamics and dependencies. Um, but it doesn't, it's not fully endogenous in the sense that like, the, the model, I mean, the, the intuition in the background is just people are just sitting around kind of randomly coming up with ideas and those magically turn into technology and, and people start using them, right? So, but it's not, the reason it's not fully endogenous is that we're not thinking about, okay, well, why did they come up with the ideas? How much effort did they, they expend to try and find those new ideas? Because they're, at least after the first few, generally get fairly difficult to find, okay? And, and require some kind of probably opportunity costs. You know, you, if you sit around all day, thinking of ideas, you're not farming and hence you're not eating. So, so especially in this Malthusian world, you need to think about that. Right. Um, so, so it's not fully endogenous because we're not thinking about the choice to undertake these sort of research type activities. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, so that, that's why we call it semi endogenous. Okay. So later on, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe we'll basically step into the solo model in a little bit. Okay. And once we set the foundation for that, then we'll think about semi endogenous of, you know, the, the rate of change of technology depends on certain things, okay, out there, but those are sort of exogenously given still. And then we'll move to fully endogenous, where actually the 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 amount you know people decide to do research instead of production or firms, and that produces technological growth, and they may internalize parts of the the returns from that uh, privately, and hence you get really really a, a proper endogenous equilibrium. Okay, so um, <clears throat> yeah, so that that's that's where we'll go. In the sort of the, the the later on in the course, okay, um, yeah, but in the shorter term, okay, well, then we're gonna do uh, the SOLA model, okay, and and essentially the SOLA model, um, you know, so we I just showed an example right where you can achieve continual growth, okay, even in the Malthusian world, even with fixed a fixed factor like land that's necessary for production. Um, in the SOLA model, we're gonna take a slightly different tack. We're still gonna get continual growth. But the, the, uh, what we're going to do is basically make it so that you don't have this fixed factor that's a necessary input. You, I mean, you, you have capital, okay, which is sort of a general, more general notion of capital rather than just land, uh, but you can create it at will by, by, by you know, basically you, you turn 
output uh, consumption, potential consumption goods into capital instead, that increases K over time. And that way you're, you can increase both K and L and Z and uh, eventually that results in Y going up. Okay. And so, so part of the, um, <clears throat> see, so part, part of the thing with Malthus is, you know, it's land is fixed and it is necessary for production. Like, and, and it's necessary for it to be proportional to production. Okay. So you could imagine a world where like somehow, I mean, maybe you can't imagine this world, but there could be a world where you, you need a certain amount of capital for production, but you don't, you just like, you, you just need some capital. And then you can just use as many labor, as much labor as you want, and you can scale it up arbitrarily with labor. Okay. So, but with the Cobb Douglas production function, we assumed you have decreasing returns to labor. Okay. So the, the, the marginal uh, product of workers goes down and down and down as you get more and more workers. That's the overcrowding, basically. If you didn't have that, well, then you could also achieve unbounded growth. But, but it seems, I mean, it's like, you know, you need capital. I mean, you have a, you have a factory or whatever, you know, you can only put so many workers there to productively work. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, that, so, so it's sort of, it's, it's, I think it's reasonable to think that we need to step into the solo world where you can start investing arbitrarily in capital. Okay. And then that, and then that way produce uh continual growth, like the kind that we see in the modern world. Okay. Um, all right. So that's what we're going to do next, I guess. So, yeah, so we'll do that next. Uh, Let's see. So, and I mean, there's some stuff. I think that in the syllabus, I'm saying it. We're doing syllabus. So there's some stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go over a little bit of math and sort of like working with continuous time models. Okay, but basically, we're going to go into the solo and and sort of reformulate that in continuous time. Okay, from from what we know. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's that's fine for next time. I guess I'll end two or three minutes early here, um, but. Yeah, so have have a good weekend. It's a three day weekend. Enjoy it, um, and you know, you know, take a peek at that homework. If you got any questions? We can talk about it on a uh, on Tuesday or or in office hours. And I'll post the uh, office hours going to be let's say two two p.m. on on uh, Wednesday, and I'll post that on the syllabus and and on the website. Okay. All right. Thank you.